usually go to the middle of the pack. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we started a discussion with National Weather Service Gray about safe zones, which is inland, you back. They've got a lot of evacuation moves on the coast, but we don't have any of those up here. So we just tell people to go to higher ground, and they're considering looking at actual places for people to go, to find those places, and how people could potentially get there considering all the bodies of water that we have within Knoxville County and have it up and cause these problems. Um, we're working with Stowe, Newry, Andover, Parish of Taylor District, Coast and Mexico Sewer District, um, on potential mitigation banks, as well as the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and FEMA um, on larger projects in Freiburg and Rumford. Um, we are in between um, our two G402 courses for this year, the next one's tomorrow night in Woodstock. Uh, the last one was two weeks ago, phenomenal. <coughs> Course um, for elected officials, keep your communities compliant to be eligible for grant funds. Also gonna be sending out the National Incident Management System survey soon, which also keeps communities in compliance for receipt of grant funds. Uh, by answering the questions in that survey and sending it up to us. We'll roll that up to the state in the beginning of December. Um, now that we're getting reports, we're going to be trying to push out a great deal of reimbursement requests um, from the last nine months over the next two weeks, um, in particular with our own local emergency planning committee staff as we have until November 15th to do reimbursement requests, so hopefully a little bit, we can have to buffer for anything that might not go well with putting together those reports. Have a good time. Um, I can't remember whether I said last time or not. The Gulf of Maine Research Institute has accepted our proposal for doing the Inland um, Flood Watch and Resilience Project with Oxford County, moving it from just a coastal county into the inland where they're uh, first in the county. We're going to be the template um, and see how this goes. They're going to support the whole thing for us, say for a small annual fee. We need to now re-meet and look at communities that might want to fully engage and pick out specific spots in their communities that they would like. Some of the communities on the coast have signs up saying, hey, if you're here, we want to record the conditions for us, and this is why, and this is what it serves. And in some of our communities would step up for <coughs> that piece. Um, we have an Andrews Coggin River Gauge meeting tomorrow in Rumford with the Weather Service from the USGS, Army Corps of Engineers, and FEMA also going to be there for other things, but they didn't participate in that meeting, looking at potentially um, or discussing the possibility of installing another gauge in the Bethel area because there's nothing in between Gorham and Robert. Um, and there's a lot of little little rivers yeah. and um, <coughs> mountains that feed that river. That, um, so it'll, we'll see what happens. It'll, and that will be a discussion about costs and annual maintenance fees. Uh, that's usually the hold up for all of that. And we'll see what, what happens with that. Uh, we're doing the Central Maine Power Winter Prep Meeting is next week in Augusta. Um, thankfully, I got asked to be on a panel with CMP liaisons and the Kennebec County EMA director, so I will be up there the next few days being on a panel and participating in that meeting. Um, we're coordinating and disseminating the information um, about CISA, the cybersecurity and infrastructure security agency uh, for safe assessments, which are security assessments at first entry for municipal and critical facilities around the county. We're getting several of them lined up for these assessments, which are helpful in identifying gaps and then make that able for them to receive, uh, easier for them to receive grant funding to fill those gaps. Um, also gives them a really good understanding of where the vulnerabilities in their facility may be. Two of our staff went up and they did the Community Emergency Response Team Train the Trainer, 
we're looking at putting together, organizing and putting together uh, the option for a community to have teams trained for their warming and cooling centers as they so desire. That was the whole point of the planning process there to be able to come back and do that. Um, currently being inundated with uh, disaster reporting support and mass communication software vendor requests. Um, I've been holding them off for years, uh, but it's it's something I feel like in 2025 needs to be discussed at the county level and what we're going to do if it cannot be run out of the emergency management agency office of staff of four for 24-7 operations. No. Um, I'd be happy to facilitate any of those meetings for any of the departments here. <laughs> um, um, we have an exercise coming up second week in October at Rockford Power um, and Pinnacle of Canton has also recently just reached out to us to hold an exercise. So we're going to be getting in touch with them. Um, we just went through the process of revamping our hazard vulnerability assessment and capability gap analysis process uh, to start working with the communities, getting them um, up to speed on that so that as we move into the next grant season in the next year, we can do those community assessments and maybe provide some assistance with uh, in our municipalities for updating their local plans, which most of them have not been updated since we pushed them to update them or create them in 2011. So uh, we're gonna push again. And next month, we will be moving um, for all these years, you may or may not know. Jeff knows. Some other people know. But we have had a satellite phone here in Ashford County that's been paid for to date by the state. They are no longer supporting that. Um, so discussed with Jane and, and Jeff and Quentin um, bringing the sat phone. Uh, down here, back to county, and we're going to do that switch over in November um, to keep that capability. Yeah. That's all. Great. Welcome back to the bubble. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, questions, comments, analysis? Anybody? And also, those courses, like you're, you've got one tomorrow night, I think you said, uh, for lots of public officials. How often are those available? I do them every year, twice a year. So it's twice a year, because you're going to have two new commissioners, so I just wanted to make sure that they... Yep, they're going to have to wait until next September, yeah, October, be a while away, away, September away. and October, yeah. every year since 2011. Yeah, so they, yeah. they won't have to take that for a few months. Oh yeah, no, they got time, but very helpful, very useful, always good discussion, and it's good. Just, we are, I think we just wanted to make sure who knows, whoever they are, they ought to be notified ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. between them yeah. saying... You know, I, I don't know if you heard, I started talking when, when you started talking. <laughs> but that's the exact same question I had. That's the same question I had. Yeah. Okay. Sherry. Excellent. So, right now we're just working to help Deb get over the surreal experience of retiring in a week. <laughs> a week. Um, so, that's high on our. Yeah. list of things in the office right now just because <coughs> it's just going to be very different for her and for us. Mm -hmm. um, Tabby is out right now. We're kind of slow right now, but it's a good thing that we're slow because the <coughs> main revenue portal that we talked about a year ago um, rolled out last Tuesday and all the testing that we requested did not come through as requested, so we are dealing with quite a mess. Um, transfer tax collected is rounding up in the electronic system so I'm hoping by the end of the month they will have it fixed so that they do not try to collect more than what we collected <laughs> because I do not want to release that from our county portion because that would just not be right so I'm working with main revenue to try to get the portal updated um, there are so many discrepancies between the electronic version of the RITT and the paper version that were not addressed as we had discussed back in April with them. Um, so that is a big headache right now. So we're all under 
a little bit of stress trying to that make sure. Probably that didn't really surprise you that much. It really didn't, <laughs> but <laughs> but <laughs> you can always hope. <laughs> yes. So as much it just goes to show me that as much communication as we attempted to facilitate, that it still didn't work out the way that we <clears throat> expected it to. So um, other than that, we're getting super excited about Trick or Trunk next week because we are all participating in the office, so this is going to be a, the second year. So last year we had full participation, this year we'll have full participation. Well, nice. And I just want to make sure that I do recognize I've had to work with Zane a lot over the last couple of weeks with interviews and discussions of potential candidates for the full front position, and I just really appreciate his willingness to ask the questions and to kind of throw something back at me to make me think. and. Just being able to have that open communication with him has been fantastic and just welcome after a whole year without somebody to do that with. There's still white game, huh? Still, yes. 20 bucks when we're done the meeting? I it was 40. Here we go. Yeah, a lot of things yeah, going on there. A lot of 
um, getting authorized in order to do that. But yes, we uh, definitely locked down that $177,000. Yeah. Right. And that body scanner we're working on, what we're going to do for taking over. Yeah. Wow. And uh, I also, uh, the week before last, was trained by Community Concepts um, to do the ARCA filings. We got the quarterly ARCA report in, um, so I feel comfortable doing that going forward. Um, we do need to obligate all our funds by the end of this year, so once Tony's back, um, I am going to grab and try to we'll figure that all out. Good. Thank you. Questions, comments? Thank you. No question. Did you have something? Uh, you said that the, the department heads will be able to do their own billing. And is that, and is that, did you say that automatically codes it? To We're going to code it based on, um, so the department heads, when they receive a vendor bill, they can forward it to this new email address that we have set up. They can either indicate the code at that point, or we will code it based on history when we get it. Um, we have some sort of cheat sheets about which vendors go to which budget code, um, and then the, they will get it to you. So if it's wrong, and they're like, oh no, you have that as uniforms, we really want this as body cameras, something like that, they can indicate it at that stage. So there's two different places they can indicate it, but before it goes into our books, it will have that correct code on it. I hope that works well. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the redundancy part of that is, is that they have questions or concerns rather than um, us running from department to department. Mm -hmm. They can quickly send an email, a note right in the, in the process, and that will send that note, an email alert uh, to Lindsay or I um, to look at that and, and uh, figure out what the note says. You know, this has nothing to do with me. This isn't even from um, Deeds. It's for somebody else. Um, they can put that right in the notes and we get an email alert on that. So again, we're dealing with the issues prior to the bill um, you know, being paid or us trying to backtrack on it. It's an upfront uh, notification. And we can still, uh, this office can still override anything too. So like for example, if Jen decides to like buy a TV and code it as like a court appointed judge, Lindsay can be like, no, no, like we're not doing that. <laughs> this office can still override that stuff. So there's still like a check and balance. It's not like they can just put it anywhere. Exactly. It still can be controlled. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know, and Jen tries to do that a lot, so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm like, Jen. Yeah. Well, I'm not even talking about you. I just like, no. Like, <laughs> 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 oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, they just did it to me. Yeah, but we'll still, the control will still be over in this office, so Lindsay can override all that. Yeah, I, too, so. I'll see everything, too. Um, mm -hmm. There'll be two levels of approvers, myself and a department head. <laughs> And I have a question. That ACH um, <coughs> option, would that be uh, available for like employees, like mileage reimbursements and, and uh, wheels reimbursement or anything else that they may need? I will send you an, an invite to bill.com to set up your ACH if you would so like. You can also, mm -hmm. if you prefer, get reimbursed through payroll, which will also put you direct deposit. Okay, I had mentioned that quite a while ago, actually. So. You, so that's an option for the that employee? That is an option, yeah. yes. Yeah. I'm on. Yeah. What, what did you do? Uh, like that. Put his mileage in because he like, would never do a mileage thing. Yeah. And this is how they do it. So I thought because I just received one that's more mileage tech this morning. And yeah. yeah. That, um, we but, have a couple yeah. more in process for you, so I can take those out and do it in sure. next week's payroll if you want. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know what? It's not going to be that much longer. Let's not let's not poo poo all, all of that. Unless it's a real um, um, troublesome to send it by mail. It's not real okay. troublesome um, with the new system. It's very very easy to do whichever order we want. Mm -hmm. We don't even have to print out a check anymore. Um, it all gets centralized through the system. Okay. But I will send you an invite to bill.com if you do want to set up. Okay, uh, I'll probably do it then. Yeah. And now, uh, eventually, would we have everybody on that process, uh, like we do with the payroll? If they want to, yeah, we could. They would just, I would assume, mm -hmm. like, Lindsay, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, so right now we have employees, if they want to direct deposit on their mileage sheet, they would just write direct deposit, and I'm assuming if they want it through ACH, they would just 
write ACH and then you send them a request, right? Those visa that they would get. Yeah. yeah. Pretty simple. Okay. Yeah. The same thing, like when you get that educational thing, maybe they already know. Yes. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, they already know. Yeah. Oh, okay. but, uh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. For some oh, reason, no. we thought you wanted to check. Yeah. Okay. Nicole <laughs> and I did this the other day. We're like, I think they want to check, right? Not yeah. necessarily. No, yeah. we'll, check. we'll send you a uh, ACH. Okay. Yeah. okay.
Thank you. Questions for Ben? Okay. Get your speech already on the line. Um, I am ready to defend our budget with everything I have. <laughs> <laughs> We'll go back to Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Continue to be busy. I have three new trainees that are fit for this week. Um, we've got a longer <coughs> list of approvals for today. Um, we're just trying to keep moving on, and some come and some go. We just keep filling those spots. Okay. That's it. Make progress. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> From my house to Byron, it looks like you're making far. Right? <laughs> <laughs> 50,000 feet. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, let's go with you, Dana. Uh, I don't have too much other than uh, I'm sure you've all, you've all watched the news. The troops are very busy, as and pretty consistently so. Um, we've got firearms qualifications going on this week, so it started on Monday, it'll run from Monday through Thursday. Uh, we're just ramping up for some end of year training, the mandatories, the uh, defensive tactics, and other academy required uh, mandated training is going to be going on, most of that's online, but the troops are still in and out of the office and trying to manage you know, patrol time versus uh, computer time, desk time. Um, Couple of big things going on. There's a post shoot review being scheduled that's coming up here in the next couple of weeks regarding the officer involved shooting from May. Um, and I have four interviews scheduled on Halloween on October 31st. So hopefully one and one will pan out and maybe we'll be lucky to move forward with one. Good. Good. Any yeah. questions for Dana? You don't have to look easy. Yeah. <laughs> Still some of the and I gave the rest of the updates for the jail. Um, <coughs> we did have a um, uh, career day at Hudson College, which several of us attended. We were able to bring back some applications, which was pretty successful. Uh, we looked really good up there. We actually were able to bring an application back for uh, dispatch. That was good. And um, we had a lot going on with the correction side, a bunch of meetings coming up. And I'll let still be in this thunder, I'll let him talk about that. How well was that attended at that hustle? <coughs> it was very well attended. It was, good. Oh, it was. Yeah, it really okay. was. Um, and one of the classes wasn't able to attend because of something else, but it is something we're going to do uh, in the future good. again up there. Um, we look good. Uh, we had a lot of questions. And was, I was really impressed with the amount of um, students from the area, from within Oxford County yeah. or in the surrounding area. Um, a lot of them are doing criminal law. Um, some are interested in dispatch <coughs> uh, and, and most definitely law enforcement. So, uh, did you have an actual display? Up there? Yeah, we did. So we, we've got we've got a um, a table we set up, and we have uh, we have uh, some props we set up, uh, some stand up posters. Uh, we had uh, packets to hand out uh, explaining uh, paid benefits, applications, things like that. We had some of our equipment there. We had. <coughs> Major was there with me. Uh, we had a couple of deputies attend that we talked to. Talked to the uh, dog. The dog was at training, so and he just graduated. So that's not that he just graduated on. Do you have not the dog? That might that might be. Interesting. Yeah, well, we did. We had pictures of the dog, but the dog was at training. So, uh, but he just graduated. Uh, Jones is graduating on Wednesday. Yeah, of last week uh, from the uh, drug school. So, good good news going on there. Yeah, I'll still dance thunder a little bit, but you know, we only have 80. Yeah, we had 84 yesterday. In, 80, in March yesterday. yesterday. Higher. What did you know today? Higher. That was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? <coughs> okay. See you want to jump to Dana? Yeah, okay. Dana's the best. That's the last of that we did. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
if we went by today's numbers, we'd have to adjust that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> I, I don't even know where to the sheriff talks me off the ledge sometimes because I come in here with the intent of just absolutely unloading on the DA's office and the court system. Um, and it's not any one person's fault, but they are failing mm -hmm. the county jail system. Thank you. Um, we had 14 inmates scheduled for court hearings, not, not new arrests, people that were been in jail and scheduled last Friday. Wow. One person, one of them got resolved. Um, the vast majority of them just got continued for another month or two. Um, they schedule lots of people for hearings and nothing gets done. Yep. I don't know why nothing gets done. They don't tell me, they don't have to tell me. Um, oh, yeah. One side or the other is asking for a continuance. It happens. Uh, I've got one particular inmate in my crosshairs because he's been in jail for over seven months now on a probation violation. No new criminal charges. <laughs> He should have been adjudicated three or four months ago. Uh, might have got a county jail sentence, but either way, he, sh he should have had his day in court. And I'm not trying to speak in defense of the inmate, mm -hmm. uh, but Probably I don't know what the fault is. Um, 20 years ago, this wouldn't have happened. You wouldn't, you wouldn't sit in jail for six months on a probation violation. You would go to court, you would have your day, and get adjudicated. Uh, that is not happening. Sometimes yeah. being blamed by the judges is what I, I heard. But when I when I talk to Neil, <laughs> yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Everybody can blame everybody. Yeah. I'm just trying to tell you that we have 86 people in jail and it's costing us $85 a day for every inmate. And we suffer the uh, uh, And and mm -hmm. when your budget committee gets this budget request tonight and the jail budget's gone up almost two million dollars, mm -hmm. that's yeah. why. Yeah. Because we're going to have to pay if the numbers don't come oh, down. Yeah. We will pay over a million dollars next year after we're open full service again. Wow. So, okay. crazy, yeah. Yeah, and the calls for service continue to go up. The complexity of our calls, so we heard from you yeah, after the months, but the numbers are going up. So, uh, part of it is, you know, like I said, I reached out, I called Neil again yesterday. <coughs> part of it is, I don't think we have a sitting judge. So, we haven't had a while, haven't um, we? We need to have a permanent judge assigned here so that they can start seeing the same names and same requests. Mm -hmm. It's I just think it's they'd much rather do county jail time. So when they feel like they've done enough time in the county jail, they go in there plead guilty mm -hmm. and they get time served rather than going to state prison, state which costs us money. Mm -hmm. um, the only other thing we can do is take the unused courts upstairs, courtrooms, and put a dormitory up there for prisoners. That's we only have two courtrooms and no judge. Jeez. So might be an option. I didn't know that. Not really, right? So I, where do you want to put them? Uh, I'll end with some more good news. Uh, I did forward you the I did uh, see that. food service proposal from our current uh, contract that we're willing to extend. It, it was a fairly minimal, small increase. Uh, I was expecting a larger increase price-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, I sent it to the sheriff for review. Once he's done, we'll, we'll forward it over. It. I think it's something we definitely do. Um, we had nothing but good rapport with them, the first contract. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised that that didn't go up as much. And that's actually a budget line number that we can reduce yeah. um, with, that, with that number. Okay. And then other than that, we're one person short, but you'll have a name for you on your next meeting um, to fill our full time spot. Potentially a couple names for part time employment. Um, and we'll go from there. Okay, any other questions or comments for me? Mm -hmm. I like this story. <laughs> we're, we're still pretty busy. I'm going to have to schedule some off court days to get rid of some pending files. Um, we'll be at 400 new jackets for nearly a week. Two weeks ago, that was you know before Christmas we hit 400, and we're like, yeah, we hit 400. So we're thinking, I guess it just kind of reflects everything that's happening. Yeah. Like that if he gets this name started, that he does a little bit better. Like I said, he's getting he's getting served. I've got a 
there are some students who are more safety, you know, just crank out and who are more safety that really play for their future and more in the future. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to say? Questions? Guardianship is still. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm sure it's okay. And it tends to be certain areas.